Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ and all who have ears to hear. So I was just reading the book of Acts. Happy Sabbath day. I was just, after I got time, I think I got done spending time with the Lord. I went straight in the, um, reading the word. I'm in the book of Acts right now at the moment. And I was reading Acts 17. So it's when Paul is talking to the men of Athens. And the men of Athens is talking about... Well, Paul mentions how they have worshipped an unknown God. And this just reminds me of the people who... I think they're agnostic. They say, you know, they don't really know there's a God exists. Or, you know, they want to believe in a God. But it's, this, is what, this is mostly what I get when I go street preach. Um, just in, in general, while I hear when people say, well, I believe in a God, but I just don't know, man, like about Jesus. I just don't know what's out there, but I do believe in a higher power. That's what I get. That's what I get. When people say, I believe in a higher power, but, you know, they don't want to come to Christ. They don't want to, you know, say they don't want to say they don't, you know, claim a God, but they say, oh, I, I believe in a higher power. I believe in a higher power. I remember there was this girl I was trying to minister to, and um, she used to be a showgirl. I met her when she was a showgirl, um, prayed for her and stuff like that. I messaged her, like, I think a couple weeks ago. I was trying to, you know, tell her about Christ, like invite her out to just, you know, tell her about Christ and stuff and tell her she used to rely on Christ. And she was just more like, well, you know, I don't need a book to tell me how to live my life and, you know, she was like, well, I'm a good person. I just need to believe in a higher power and I'm good. And, you know, this this higher power thing, I just never understood that. I just never stood this. I believe in a higher power and I'm okay with that. Because how are you okay with believing a higher power that you don't even know? Like, you don't even know this higher power. But you know he exists. But you don't know anything about this higher power. This higher power, he's not interacting with you. He's not talking to you. And and, and the thing is, even if you, if you believe in this higher power, you don't even know anything about he, she. I mean, because if you believe in a higher power, I mean, I don't know what you describe it as. But, I mean, this mystery higher power. So, it reminds me what Paul says of the unknown God. So, I'm going to just read the verse. Starting at Acts 17. Um, Acts 17, 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God, whom therefore you, ign you ignorantly worship him, uh, him I declare unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven, and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So Paul pretty much talked to him in Athens. He, he ran across his, yeah, this is devotion to the, to the unknown God. So this unknown God thing, this higher power thing, this little, this mystery God that people want to believe in, this thing has been going on for a long time. See, I mean, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And I, like, I don't know how people are so comfortable believing in this higher power where this higher power you believe these people believe in. I, I say the agnostics. I think agnostics, they don't know there's a God or don't believe in a God. I guess they don't know. I guess I don't want to say they worship a God because I think agnosticism means they don't believe or they don't know that if a God exists. But some people, uh, there are some people who, who say they just believe in a higher power and they don't want to put a name on it. And... And Paul, so I'm the, the um. So Paul talks about how like God's not made by silver and gold, but in verse, in verse thirty, he says, "At the times of his ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in which he judged, 
he will judge the world in righteousness by that man who we have ordained whereof he have given assurance to all men and that he have raised him from the dead so even if someone was believing in this mystery higher power uh, you, you should be seeking this higher power you should be seeking because why would you believe in something you're not trying to understand you know that doesn't that doesn't really make any sense to believe in something but you're not seeking to understand what you believe in and i think that's a lot of that's actually a lot of people just in, in, in their day-to-day -day life and a lot of other religions you know they say they believe in something but they don't have understanding of why they believe in what they believe in and some people don't they don't people don't put in the time so paul says yeah they should seek the lord they should seek the lord so i mean you should be seeking whatever you believe in in general so if, if you're a christian you, you should be seeking the lord to understand we you know who the Lord is. When, why do you truly believe in Him? Like, who is the Lord? How? Did, what is He like? What is He dislike? How can I please the Lord? You should be seeking the Lord. You should be seeking God because if God exists, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> I mean, do you not think uh, if you believe in a God, you should be seeking as God to understand who this God is and and how He operates? Because a lot of people in other religions. They they just they're just um they're born in that you know that religion it could be a false religion they're just born in that religion, but they don't actually put in the time to know why they believe in it you know they just believe in it because you know their parents were that and their grandparents was that and they just feel like well this is just the hand I was dealt I just gotta stay like this and it's like okay but if you just seek if you just seek to see why you believe in this why your parents believe in this and get to know this God you believe in. You realize, you know, most people, if, if, if many people in false religions actually sought their God, they realize they would not want to worship that God. Like, for instance, um, Islam, like the the the, the, uh, the Muslim God, if you read the Quran, it has a lot of horrible things. It has a, it has a lot of horrible things um, against women, against um, people. Uh, they, they, I mean, the Quran, it says to kill um, Jews and Christians. It says the... Um, the uh, strike your wife if she's disobedient something like that like the Quran has a lot of horrible stuff but you still have people who support who support the Quran you still have you have a, a wave of um people switching to Islam because I know there's people saying oh well you know Islam's gonna overtake Christianity in the future you know what I'm saying Islam's gonna be the dominant religion I'm like, well, that's because people are just foolish. P people are not reading the Quran. There's plenty of Muslims who don't know the Quran. There's plenty of Muslims who don't read the Quran. They, don't, they have not read the full Quran. I read a little bit of the Quran. I know a couple of verses. I know a couple of verses from just other street preachers that have been preaching and they expose the Quran. So I know there's preachers, street preachers who preach the Quran. They actually preach from the Quran and Muslims get mad. And it's like, why are you getting mad at what your book says? Because look, 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 even 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 Paul says, God has made us in all one blood. Look, God God has made us in all one blood. I mean, look, we're not all children of God, but we're all creations of God. And you know, Satan makes all these fake religions, all these fake deities, all these false gods out here. And you know, and and people know the Quran. That stuff ain't right. They just don't take the time. To just seek, you know, they don't take they don't take the time to actually seek why they believe in what they believe in. Even as a Christian, even if you grow up Christian, you should seek of oh, why you believe in God. You know, why why do you worship Him? You should get a connection with the Lord. So you're not one of these Christians who just grow up in church and you know you just wander away um, year, years later. Because this this whole unknown God thing. Uh, going back to the unknown God, no God, no kind of went off course. But back to the unknown God, these people say, "I believe in a higher power." Look, um, look, God is not having this unknown. God is not having this. I believe in a higher power. Like, especially you live in a, uh, the Western civilization with all the technology. You have all the resources. You have, you know, you're, you're not, you're not struggling for a roof over your head and stuff like that. I'm not talking about financially wise, but it's just like you can, you have a roof over your head. You don't, you don't have to worry about. On you you dying all the time you know like you live in a western civilization you you have no excuse or, or why you're not seeking who god is because i because i have I heard, I heard stories of just people in like poor countries who just 
you know, humble themselves and they just ask, they just want to know who the creator of the universe is, you know, and God has mercy upon these people because, um, you know, they have less resources. But, yo, if you especially if you're in America, like you have all this technology, all these resources and you still believe in this unknown God, that's not going to cut it, man. That That's that's not that's not going to cut it. There's no excuse for this. This is no excuse. God, as, the, as the word says, at the times of this ignorance, God winked it, but now commands, commands all men everywhere to repent. God is not okay with this ignorance. God is not okay with this ignorance. You you need to repent. So if you out here saying you believe in a higher power, if you out here saying, I don't know if there's a God, I don't know, you need to repent. <laughs> you need to repent. You need to seek God. You need to seek God. I know there's a there's this um this dude from long ago I forgot his name like Paul Pascal something like that I think someone said he did a wager to see like the wager of why you should believe in Christ because the consequences are are very very serious you know like if Christ you gotta think about it folks it could, this is a big deal if Christ is real if Christ is God I mean he is but let's say if you're if you're an atheist or you're an unbeliever and you if you just wait on the scales like hey if Christ is real and he really is God, that means the turn that means the consequences last for eternity. But if he's not real, and if he's not God, then there's no consequences. But that wager in itself should make you want to seek who God is. Because, you know, if if you're wrong, that means your consequences last for eternity. Do you not understand eternity is forever? That's a very long time, forever. And, and people don't understand the gravity of the situation. It's not just like, oh, it, it is what it is. Like, no, bro, if you get this wrong, if you if you take this L, there there's no recovery for this. If you die without Jesus Christ, that is an eternal L. There's no recovery. There's no bounce back afterwards. God has his grace and mercy upon you each and every day. When he wakes you up, you should be seeking God. Each day when God brings breath into your lungs, you should be praising God, thanking God. You should be getting, getting to know who he is. That's why God sent his word. That's why God sent his word. Because God has appointed a day for judgment. God's going to judge you. He, God's going to judge you. And like this could be no excuse on why you're not seeking the Lord, on, on why you still believe in this unknown God, why you still believe in these false religions. Because you're not seeking the truth i realize that this generation has a problem of not seeking the truth if people just sought the truth they will find christ i mean because jesus is the truth so if you're seeking truth you will have like christ he will, he will tug in your heart he will tug in your heart god knows your intentions god knows um yeah god knows what you want if you really have a love for the truth christ will come he will reveal himself he'll 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 make a way for you to find him but it, but if you're out here believing in these false lies you want to believe in these false religions you want to believe in this higher power like there's no excuse because you're not seeking truth you don't want the truth at that point you just want comfortability you just want to feel comfortable you just want to feel relaxed like that's not okay like that, that that's not gonna cut it with with the one and true living god you got to love truth you have to love truth because I love, this generation, this generation loves promoting this. You know, you have your own truth. I have my own truth. And that's OK. That's not OK. That's chaotic. That's confusion. That is confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. So we don't have our own truths. There's only one truth and there's a lot of lies. So, you know, the devil is the father of lies. But Jesus Christ, he is the truth. He's the way. He's the life. And no one's going to come to the Father but through him. And that's how it is. And that's how the truth works. So, and people want to be mad at religions. Like, oh, religions are so divisive. Religions are naturally divisive. Just because, I mean, truth and lie is always going to um, compete against each other. You know? And and it's, and people don't understand. You can't, people want this whole, people will think, oh, well, you just get along, be tolerant. It's like, look, we can live in a, we can live in a civil society where we can disagree and still respect each other because number one, we're all God's creation and God commands us to love everyone. Um, period. So we should all treat each other with respect, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna respect your religion. 
Because I remember this one guy when I was in the military, I, I told him, um, Allah, Allah was fake. I was like, yo, bro, Allah's not real, dude. He was a Christian. So this dude in the military, he, he was a Christian. Uh, he grew up Christian. Then he just switched to, he just switched to Islam. Then, um, I think I was talking some of the Bible and I told him, Hey, like Allah is fake. That's a fake God. Then he messaged me on my phone later. He was talking about, Hey bro, I got really, um, I think he said he felt disrespected about what I said about his religion or like an apology or whatever. I, t I told him straight up, I'm like, bro, I'm not apologizing. <laughs> I was like, I'm not apologizing, bro. Like, I don't, I, I told him, I don't respect a religion. I, I don't, I don't respect that religion, bro. I don't respect that. I, I don't, I don't respect you going to hell. I mean, like, cause if you believe in that foolishness, if you believe, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God, if you believe in a, a false religion, you're going to hell. So no, I'm not going to comfort you in the hell. I'm not going to justify you going to hell. I'm not going to respect you going to hell. So no, I don't, I don't, I don't respect some false God. I don't respect any demon. So no, I don't respect Allah. It's because Jesus Christ is the truth. Jesus Christ leads to eternal life. But these fake religions, Allah, these mystery higher powers, they lead to destruction. They lead to the pits of hell. So I'm not respecting that stuff. And we got to get right with God. So look, if you're agnostic, if you're believing in this unknown God, this higher power, you, you have to spend time and seek the Lord. You need to seek Jesus Christ. You need to seek him. Because we're in, we're in the last days, um, time's running out. God is separating his sheep from the goats right now, and and, and you don't you don't want to remain in ignorance. You don't want to keep remaining ignorance because that because that this age of grace is running out. This age of grace is running out, so you don't have a long time. I mean, people like to say, um, well, I'm gonna give my life to God when I get older. Look, bro, we don't have that much time. Like I said, we don't have that much time. All right, you you gonna be looking dumbfounded when destruction starts falling from the sky, and you realize you're not good with God. So I mean, pretty much when judgment comes, most people you're not even gonna think about God because you're so full of fear, and it's probably judgment upon your head. So you need to spend, you need to take this time seriously. This, this little quiet time we have right now, you need to take this time seriously and actually get right with God. Read the Word, pray, seek Him, seek Him. And, and look, and if you're in some false religion, you need to really understand why you believe what you believe in, and 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 not, and not in a, a false religion is every religion that's not Christ. I'm gonna just tell that I'm gonna say it right now. False religion. You need to you need to real you need to compare your false religion to the Word of God, because because uh, I'm telling you the word the Word of God you you you're gonna resonate with the Word of God. You, you're gonna love the Word of God. I mean honestly, I mean if if you you're a human being, you will. But all these other false religions, they lead to death. They lead they lead to eternal damnation. They don't lead to joy. They don't lead to happiness. They don't lead to families. Like the Italy, all these other false religions, they're just false lights and it's confusion and it, and it makes your flesh feel good. But we cannot live in our flesh, especially in the end We must walk in wisdom. We must walk in understanding. We must use common sense, especially... We need common sense, folks. We need common sense. It's it's not it's not logical for you to say I believe in his higher power that I don't know of and or I never seen before. He's not talking to me. I'm not talking to him. But I believe in him. Like this this is foolishness, folks. That's foolishness. We gotta come out of our foolishness and, and and come to the truth of Jesus Christ before it's too late. Amen.